Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am really looking forward to showing you some of the items in Simon Hurley's latest release. So Simon was kind enough to email me and ask if he could send over a few of the items from his latest release, and I'm excited to show you some of his new things. They are Christmas themed, so I'm really excited because it's getting to that time of year where we're going to really want to start getting a head start on our Christmas crafts and Christmas cards. So I'm really excited because I've been itching to get some lists together for Christmas time and it's no better time than now to start. So thank you, Simon, for sending these over. I'm really excited to see. Now, he did release some other items in this release as well, so be sure to check that out. But I have a few of the items here that we are going to play around with. This is Gold Rush, so pretty, and then Silver Lining. So we have a silver and gold, really pretty for the holidays. And I have to tell you, Lunar Paste was something that was really intimidating intimidating to me, but I was able to play around with it last month for the very first time. And I even told Simon, I am completely in love with it. It is so easy to use and it really makes a stunning difference on a card. In fact, if you aren't doing hot foil yet and you really want that hot foil look, definitely get some of Lunar Paste because it's just so pretty and it really resembles that hot foil look that is so pretty, especially for the holidays. Another thing that he sent over that I'm really excited about is this six by six layering stencil and it is going to create some really fun trees. So here is the example of what we can create by layering these. One thing I'm already noticing is, is it is one stencil, which I love. So it's a layering system, but everything is on one piece, which is really nice. You only have to keep track of one thing. Also, we have some little pieces inside here, so you could really even take those a step further and use the insides as some stencils as well. So that is really, really neat. So we're gonna definitely be playing around with that. I'm in love with this peel apart stamp. This is so pretty. Does this one have a name? Christmas Village, yes. Christmas Village, how pretty is this? So you can use this all in its entirety and keep it together, but if you notice, there are little cut apart pieces in here and you can take them out and mix and match and create little individual pieces as well. So lots of ways that you can use a peel apart stamp. Again, you could use it to keep together and make an entire background, which is so pretty, but you could also take the pieces out and have little individual stamps, which I think is so fun because it makes a lot of variety for one craft supply, right? And then finally, the last item that he sent over was this really pretty, oops, it's not showing the title, but this is a Bold Holiday Blooms background stamp. Same idea as this background stamp where you can use it in its entirety or you can peel apart little pieces of it and use little portions of it. So, so pretty. I love this so much. And I think this is the perfect opportunity for us to start crafting up some Christmas cards. So I want to start by playing around with this layering stencil. So I'm going to get some cardstock out and we are going to have fun doing some layering and bringing these cute little Christmas trees to life. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm gonna be using some of his stark white cardstock. He actually sent this to me last month and I love it. It is so nice. This is 110 pound, which honestly, that's where my heart is at, 110 pound. A lot of you have been asking me about the differences be differences between the paper. Um, so I usually use 80 or 110 pound, but if you had to just choose one, 110 pound is just all the heart eyes. So he sent over his cardstock. It is the stark white cardstock. So, so nice. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this down a little bit into a smaller panel. That way we can start playing around with these stencils. Okay. So when he showed me what was coming out in this release, I instantly wanted to play with the Christmas trees and I thought how fun would it be to make pink Christmas trees. So I went online really quickly and ordered some of his pink um, ink. And this one is called Rosy Cheeks. I think this is going to be so pretty. And I thought we could do all pink trees and just have fun with one color. Plus we're going to bring in the gold lunar paste. I think this is going to be so pretty. The silver is going to be pretty as well, but because the pink is a little bit more on that warm side of the rainbow, and then the gold is definitely a warmer tone. I really wanted to pair those two together. So just giving you a little idea for my thought process there. So I think what I'm going to do is I just trim this down to an A2 size of five and a half by four and a quarter. And I am going to simply 
I'm going to simply just tape this down to my mat and then let's open up these adorable stencils. This is so cute. I'm, I'm really loving this all in one stencil. For some reason that is just thrilling to me. I think it's just like less pieces and I love that. Okay. So I think, I think what we do is start with the full trees. So I'm going to pop these out. Oh, I see it has a little, oh, there's like a little adhesive circle on here. Oh, that's so nice. Do you see? There's like a little adhesive, adhesive circle. So I'm just going to place these actually right over here so I don't lose them. But that's so nice because you can pop them right back in once you're done. But these would be really fun too to kind of play around with. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to try my best to center this on the card, but knowing full well that I will trim this panel down. So when trimming it down, I can, you know, remedy any... Um, anything that's not aligned. I'm going to bring in my T-square ruler just to align this stencil just a little bit more. And I think that's about good. It's going to be good enough because I know I'll trim down. So I'm going to grab another piece of tape. Come here. And I'm just going to tape this down right here. And I'm going to tape down here. Okay. Now let's bring in, oh, sorry. My little puppy is jingling makes it so festive for Christmas, right? Okay. He's jingling over there. Okay. So I'm going to bring in my pink blending brush and let's start this first layer. Okay. But also I'm noticing I have a lot of area here that I don't want to get ink on. So I'm going to grab this post-it tape. I have not used this before. Let's see. How does this work? Okay. I've been wanting to use this and this is a perfect opportunity. So I'm just going to use this to kind of put a little barrier between my, my stencil and the area I don't want any ink to get on. And I think that's about good. Okay. And as a reminder, I will absolutely be linking everything that I'm using in the description box below this video. I'm just going to tap off that way it doesn't come in all thick and blotchy right and I like a little bit of a softer tone so I go a little bit lighter um, in pressure but let's go ahead and see okay this is gonna be pretty I, I love it already okay I am going to I'm gonna go in pretty light because this is our first that is so pretty Simon Okay. Rosy cheeks, Simon. Love it. Okay. That's so pretty. <laughs> I love it so much. That is right up my alley. Okay. I'm going to do this one too. Everything's going to be pink. We are just going to do three pink trees. And again, I'm going to go light. Oh, that's too much. Sorry. Ugh, I can't help it. I love it. All the heart eyes. That is a really pretty color. Okay. And then do this last little one. Pretty. It's so smooth too. Wow. Okay. So pretty. I love that you can go more, you can go less. Definitely do, you know, whatever fits your style the best. I move my little Gemini here. I think it's trying to steal focus. Okay, there we go. So definitely, you know, add a little bit more or do a little less based on what colors you really want, but that is the look I'm going for. So I'm going to peel off my post-it tape and I'm going to save this because I want to use this for my next bit. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to just take the stencil. Oh, how pretty little pink trees. I love it. Okay. Now we're going to go this way. Let's move this a little bit and I'm going to line this up. And I think, I think that's good. I'm going to tape down, tape down, but also I really want some tape over here. 
Okay, and then bringing back my post-it tape, I think I only need one here, but you know what, I already have the two, so I'm just going to really double up that. Okay, now let's do more. I'm just gonna do the same color because if you add color on top of color, it's automatically going to make it a little bit darker. So you can use the same color and make this super, super simple, but it's going to just layer that color on top of, of itself and then you're gonna get some contrast. Look how pretty, can you already see the difference? Okay, I'm not gonna do too much though. I don't want it really bold just because of my own personal style, right? I like it a little bit more soft, but I love that. That is so neat. I was in love with these little tree stencils. I instantly was inspired with them. Okay. So, I think that's about good. I might add just a little bit more to this little one here. Okay, I think that's gonna be good. I want it to be subtle. So, I'm gonna peel off here, here. And revealing a stencil is so satisfying. Oh my gosh, okay. It's so cute. How cute. Oh my goodness. I love it. Okay, now what we're going to do is for this final turn, we're going to use the lunar paste. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay, does it go like this? Yes. It does. Okay, so I'm aligning it up. Now I think some of these, let me look at the back. Do some of these kind of, yes. Do you see how, whoops, that was a little close. Do you see how some of the little um, ornaments kind of fall off the tree a little bit? They kind of overlap a little bit. And I'm, I'm just talking about one or two. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't misaligning that, but that is intentional, which I love. And same with the, it looks like same with the, um, garland, if you will. Well, that's really cute. Okay, I'm gonna get my tape all ready to go here. Let's just get this off. That way we can align it and then tape down. That is so fun. Okay, I think that is where it's supposed to go. Looks good to me. So, I'm gonna place some tape here and some tape here, but I'm going to go all in on post-it tape because the lunar paste is a little bit more of, in terms of, you know, between lunar paste and ink, it's going to be a little bit more messy. So we really want to make sure that we cover all these areas that we don't want it to get on. So I'm going to cover up here because there were a little um, bits of opening, if you will. Okay, this post-it tape, why did it take me so long? Why? I don't know, but that's okay. I'm even going to cover down here because, and you'll see why once we do the tape. And you may think I'm using too much here, but I'm not going to go that far to ruin it <laughs> with um, not doing enough tape. So I want everything covered that I don't want. So now all those openings are going to be covered with this beautiful paste. I'm so excited. I love this. So let's look, look, look how pretty. Isn't that nice? Okay. You can use those little spatulas and you know what I'm talking about, right? Those little kind of mixed media spatulas. I don't have one. So what I'm going to do, let me cover up my ink. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a popsicle stick. I've done it before and it works wonders. Okay. So a little popsicle stick and I'm just going to grab a little bit of this paste and I'm simply going to place just like a little bit above each tree, if you will, just because it'll just help me kind of focus where it's going to go. So I'm gonna do that and then I can always add more, but I'm going to then, actually I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more up here. Okay, then knowing I can just scrape it back into 
my little container here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the edge. I'm going to take this part off though. Okay. Let's not make it messier than it needs to be. I'm going to take the edge and I'm just going to scrape it down. Okay. And then you can kind of go back through and add where you need to, there we go, where you need it to be. Just fill those areas. Do you see why we wanted to just cover everything? Okay. And then just scrape in. It's really gratifying. Okay, and then just smooth it out. That way everything is nice and even. I think that looks good. One thing I love about the popsicle stick is you just have to go once over everything, right? Because it's so nice and long. Okay, now I'm getting a little nervous because now I have to take all of this tape off and I don't want to get anything messy. But you know what? We can do this. So I'm just going to go nice and slow. And as I take this off, I'm just going to put it in the garbage. go. Oh, how pretty. Oh my goodness. So pretty. Now I'm not, I'm going to let it dry. I don't want to move it too much because I don't want it to, um, smudge or anything. Well, okay. I'm going to break my own rule because I want to see the shine. Can you see the shine? Isn't that neat? And it's raised. So we have a lot of dimension and texture there that is just so neat. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then we will continue building up this card. Okay, so this is all dry and look how pretty it is. When it catches the light, you can just get an idea of just how stunning that lunar paste is and it's so easy to use. I just love this so much. So I know that I spent all this time trying to get this perfectly in the middle of this panel. But I think I'm actually going to fussy cut these out. And I have an embossing folder that I'm going to bring in. This I will link down below. It's from Spellbinders. It's one of my favorites. But I thought that I really want to keep this so simple. I'm not going to even put a sentiment on it. I just think I'm going to have three cute little pink trees on the front of my card, but I kind of wanted to dress it up with a nice embossed background. So I'm going to really quickly just emboss a piece of 80 pound cardstock right on the, actually, no, I'm going to use, um, I'll use Simon's. So I'll go ahead and just use his 110 pound cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and get that embossed and then we'll just build this up. So, and then I'll fussy cut these out. So let me do that and then I think it'll just be a really classic touch that's going to really elevate this card. Okay, so I took a piece of that stark white cardstock and I trimmed it down just with one, one of my A2 dies. And then I am going to place this right in the embossing folder. And I'm actually gonna run this through my spell binders because I haven't quite figured out how to do my um, embossing on my new Gemini. So because I know how to emboss on my um, spell binders really easily, I'm just going to go ahead and run that through there really quick. So I'm just lining that up really nicely and I can see through there. So it might be a little hard for you to see, but sometimes it's easy when you shut the um, folder, you can see if everything is lined up really nicely. And I like that as opposed to having it crooked and then having the pattern crooked. And in something like this, where there are some definite right angles, it's worth it to just take a moment and get it lined up. Okay. I ran that through and oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that just stunning? And I think it's the right choice to accompany these super simple trees. Also because I feel like this pattern is really modern and I feel like what we have going on here is fairly modern as well. And I just think that everything is going to complement each other really nicely. So let me cut out these trees and we will get these placed on our card and it'll be pretty quickly done. So I've just been trimming these apart. That way I'm working one at a time and I found it easiest 
first of all, I'm using these fine details, detailed scissors that I recently purchased from Simon Says Stamp. And I really have to say that as someone who does not enjoy fussy cutting at all, I actually find it more manageable with a really nice pair of scissors. So I, to get really nice, clean points to these little trees, I am going to, instead of, you know, curving and moving, I'm going to cut and then come this way and cut just like that, because then you get a really nice clean point right in here. So just kind of thinking through how to get really, really clean and nice cuts on these trees. Since fussy cutting is not perfect, like on this one, I got a little bit um, too close here, but let me tell you something. As much as we stress out about it, once you put that on your card, especially if it has a white background, that is just going to heal with the eye and it'll be just fine. So don't stress too much about the fussy cutting because honestly, you're really, really not going to notice it as much as you think, right? And finally, there we go. The last little tree. I think these are so cute. I love how they turned out. So you can keep them together because they're spaced super nicely with the stencil if you just wanted to blend right on your card. But I think cutting them out was a fun little choice here, especially because it let me introduce a little embossed feature to this card. So I'm gonna build up my card base because I think it'll be easiest for this particular card to have the base ready to go first and then build from the ground up. Okay, grabbing some cardstock. Again, 110 pound stark white cardstock. I'll link it down below because it is just beautiful. And I have this trimmed at 11 by four and a quarter. And because half of 11 is five and a half, that's going to give us a nice center fold. Oh, you know what though? I, I'm so used to making top folding cards. So hold on, I have to do a different piece because this has a different orientation. So pardon me, I need to get a different base and score the other way. Oh, I'm so used to doing it that way. Okay, so now I have a piece of cardstock and this is trimmed at eight and a half by five and a half. And then we are going to do four and a quarter. Okay, so scoring at four and a quarter again, cause that's half of eight and a half to give us a nice center fold. And we will have a A2 size card of five and a half by four and a quarter. And this is the correct orientation. Sorry, I always do top folding cards and now I am doing a different orientation for this card. So I have to really think through it because I do top folding cards in my sleep lately. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place this with some foam tape. I think that will be so pretty right on this card panel or card base actually. So bringing in these scissors again because they're non-stick, which is so helpful. And I'm gonna place some nice strips right on the back here and begin with a little dimension. And we're going to continue to add some dimension because that to me is one of my favorite parts of building a card. For some reason, it's the foam tape. It's just, I feel like it just takes all of the beautiful individual pieces that were created and then it just really makes them shine. <laughs> okay, and I like to open this up. Place a little magnet there. And then just center and press that down. How pretty, I love this. Okay, I'm gonna grab some additional foam squares and again, I'm not going to do a sentiment. Now, how did, I have to look at, I'm gonna look at the pack because I really like how it was arranged. So really it doesn't matter about the trees on the side, but I really liked the little starred tree being in the center. I thought that was really nice, plus it balances it pretty well. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some foam tape now and I'll place those right on the card as well. Okay, so then we turn these around. Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. Just that little bit of shadow that we get. Oh, it's so simple, 
but so pretty. So getting an idea, I think this is going to be just about true center. That looks really good, which it actually has a little line in the embossed pat pattern that um, is actually gonna really help me with centering that. So I'm gonna take this one off, and then what I'll do is I'm going to visually center the middle. I think working from the middle out is going to be the right call here. And with some tweezers, I think this looks good. Okay, so once the first one's down, I feel like it is so much easier to go to the left and to the right, right? Okay, and then I'll bring in my little T-square ruler just to help with this part. So now that we know where this little guy is and where the bottom is, we can center everything else respectfully to each side. So let's make sure that that's straight there. And then we'll just decide on a little spacing, which I think that looks good. And finally, this little one. And then just keeping a consistent spacing and there we go. So pretty. I love the texture of the lunar paste. It just gives a really nice both visual um, and feel to that card. That is so pretty. I love that. Okay, and I am going to stop right there because I always think it's fun to add a little shine at the end, but I just don't think that it needs it. The Lunar Paste really steals the show, and I think the simplicity of this card is just very, very refreshing. So I hope you enjoyed this first card. I love it, and I really love the fact that just based on the colors and the combinations that you do, you could use these trees in such a variety of ways and you could create so many different looks. Okay, for my second card, I really want to create a fun snowy shaker scene, and I want to use these really pretty background stamps, and instead of using it in its entirety, I am going to open this up, and I'm going to use them individually. I think that that will help me achieve the look that I'm going for. And I love the fact that you have the freedom to do so, right? So you could use this all at once, or you could take the pieces out that you would like to use, knowing very well that you can simply place them right back in to have the full stamp once more. But I think that's so fun. It really helps stretch your craft supplies because then you can create such a variety of looks, right? So look how cute these are. Ugh love these. Okay, so I'm going to grab, um, let's grab three. Let's see how, how do these look? Oh, these are so neat. So I'm going to do this and I think, let me grab an A2 size panel and see. That'll kind of give me an idea for how much room I have to work with. And because there's trees as well, which could be really fun. I think it would be fun to use some trees. So I think I'll use a couple houses and okay. So knowing very well that I can just place this right back in here. And I think this will be super fun. So I'm going to use my Misty because I am just not good at stamping with, without it <laughs> or with a block. I, it's something I need to practice and I know that I'm much more confident with a Misty. I'm not going to worry about where these go because I'm going to end up cutting them out, but I'm just going to arrange these just so. And I took out my little pad underneath because I have bigger stamps here thicker. And let's grab some Memento Tuxedo Black because I am hoping to color these. Oh, very cool. Okay. So 
So, putting these in my misty will allow me the chance to double stamp if I need to, which I usually do. Okay, there's actually a spot though, like my ink kind of pooled right here. So I'm just going to dab that off. Okay, and then press this down. Oh, how pretty. Oh, I need to go a little bit more down bottom there. I love how delicate they are. Oh my goodness. So cute. Okay. And do I even need to double stamp? I kind of feel like I do just a little bit, but look how fine and delicate everything is. That's just so pretty. So dainty. So nice. And stamping once more. Oh, that looks really good. I feel like I'm missing, and you can even see the ink right here. I'm missing the bottom of this little house. Let's see if I can get it. If not, it's not a big deal because of how I'm going to, that's a little bit better, um, how I'm going to run with this and my idea for this. So let me just clean these off. I can pop them right into their home in that background stamp and then we'll stay nice and organized. Okay, so I grabbed some markers and I was thinking it would be really cute to have pink little houses and then obviously some green trees and brought in a gray also for the rooftops. So when else can you have fun with pink houses other than a cute little card? And so I'm here for it. So I am going to use for my pinks this RV260 and R21. And I have a couple different marker collections, so I'll just link both collections that I have because I believe I did pull from both. For my warm gray, I have WG3, and then I have a nice green that is G420. Now, I feel like my R21 comes in looking a little bit neon at first, but then it settles so nicely. So just know that about this color. At first, it looks kind of orange, if you will, and a little bit wild, but it always tones down looking exactly how I want it. So I'm just going to bring in that darker one first, and I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with the shading, but I'm not going to stress too much about it. And then I'll just bring in my lighter. So that's as simple as I'm going to make my shadowing and I'm going to bring in, let's see if I can do this nicely with my brush side. So I'm just going to bring this lighter in. I love this color combination together. I think it looks so pretty. I'm bringing my lighter pink and then just kind of pulling that color out to blend it out. Oh my gosh, this color. Oops, sorry about my head there. It's hard not to focus so much on the coloring part. Okay. And of course, using that Memento ink because it is alcohol marker friendly and it just helps so that the ink plays nicely with the markers and there's not some smearing and smudging. Because these are just so delicate and fine, I am going to really honestly take my time here and just keep it super simple. I'm not gonna bring in a lot of color because it looks like, um, the stamp actually has some shading in it, if you will. See how it has all of those little um, textural pieces? I'm gonna let that stand on its own because it's gorgeous, and I'm gonna let that act as coloring. Does that make sense? It's just so pretty as is that I'm not gonna add any color to it. I'm gonna let that be what it is. I think it's pretty. Okay, so I did a little bit of additional blending there. I think that looks really nice. And I'm going to bring in the screen, obviously, for the trees. I'm not going to use multiple colors. I'm just going to use one. And I'm just going to keep it really, really simple. And I'm going to color in these stripes. I may come in and add just another layer for some shadowing, but I'm just going to keep it very light. And another fun thing is this little wreath. I don't know if you can see 
Hopefully I'm not covering it up too much as I'm coloring it, but there's a cute little wreath on this door that we can bring in a little green on. And just to bring some consistency to the pieces, I will just make these cute little chimneys green. I like to kind of use the same colors on all of the pieces because it just helps to unify them. And I think it's really fun. I'm gonna bring in, I brought in a red cause I wanna color that bow red. I think that'll be a nice pop of color, but I'm gonna bring in my darker pink and have this be a nice pink door, adding just a little bit of shadow here just to bring in a little bit of depth and then for this tree because there's really no like coloring area I am simply going to just follow the little lines just to not only bring some color in but kind of bring some fullness in and I think that that is simple but there bringing this nice warm gray in just to color the roof I'm not going to do any coloring here because again, that detail of that stamp fills in really nicely, but I will over here. And this little bow on the door, how cute, I love that. And keeping simple but fair, I'm just going to make these little curtains green just to bring another little color in. It's very subtle, but it's there and I think it's nice. And also on these little scallops of this house, I'm gonna make those green too. Okay, that is where I'm going to take the coloring for this. So cute little pink houses with tiny little splashes of red and more of a mint green. And I think that those look simple, but really, really fun. Second guessing myself on this uh, rooftop though, and I think I actually will color that in just to make it really pop. Yes, I think that was the right choice. Okay, all done. And now I'm going to just cut these out. And I forgot this little trunk I just noticed. So E220 is a really nice subtle brown that I think will look really, really sweet. Next, I am going to take these cute little stitched hillside border dies that I have from Lawn Fawn. And I am going to create some cute little hills because I really want to create a really fun snowy scene for my shaker. Come on. And I think putting these little houses on a hill will be so cute. There we go. They have a variety, which is really fun. I think I'm gonna go with this nice mellow hill, if you will. I really like that. So I'm just going to grab some of my, just some cardstock, actually, yep, no, that's the right one. And I'm just gonna decide on kind of what I want for my hill. And that looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out, and then, we will have a really nice snowy hill to build our scene upon. Okay, so here are the cute little stitched hills. And I also did stamp and color a couple more sets of trees just to bring in a little bit of fullness to the piece. So we're gonna start assembling this and then we're going to add the shaker fill. I think it's gonna be so pretty, but I'm gonna go ahead and just place all of these to the side really quickly. Okay, I'm gonna use this back panel and bring a little color in. I'm gonna use the Speckled Egg Distress Oxide and I think it'll just give me a nice, I love this kind of gray blue that it is and I really think it's just going to give me that nice, beautiful wintry sky and I think it's just gonna be really, really pretty. Okay, so just blending that on, kind of just focusing more on the top because of course we're gonna have our little hills towards the bottom, but I love this kind of blue, green, gray, if you will. It's just a super pretty color that I think is super fitting for a winter scene. Oh, I like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to call that good. And I was debating on whether I should add some, you know, like snow with some paint but because we're going to use some sequins in a little bit, 
to kind of depict the snow. I thought it was going to be too much. So I'm just going to stick with, oh, see how the contrast, I love that. And then I think this complements the pink super well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my work surface, make sure we're nice and clean, and let's build this card up. I'm going to use some very simple tape runner because I know that I'm going to be filling this with sequins, and so I don't want to use foam tape or anything that the sequins can fall behind. Does that make sense? So if these were popped up off of the card, um, then our fill would kind of fall behind. So let me see if I can get this aligned just right. And that looks, that looks good. Okay, so there's my first little hill there. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Oh, I love making sure I don't have any ink on my fingers. Okay. I love that contrast. That's so fun. I think that was the right call. Okay. And then adding some to this. Again, I'll link everything that I'm using down below in case you want to recreate this or if you are inspired to use these in another way. Very fun. Oh my gosh, I love how that looks. That's so pretty. Okay, now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the backs of these. In fact, I might even do liquid glue because it gives me a little bit more control and I can do some tweezers. So what I'll do is kind of arrange these how I'd like. I'm thinking this little one will go up here. This will be on the bottom hill. And I'm gonna kind of tuck, if that makes sense. So it looks like the, actually this one's kind of stuck down there. So it looks as if, there we go, the house is kind of in a snow drift, if you will, right? I just think that looks really, really nice and cozy. Obviously not crooked though, we don't want the house tipping. Oh, really cute. Okay, okay, I am loving how this looks. I think that's really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down and then we're going to build the shaker and be all done. Okay, adding my first little house. Again, I like the idea of tucking it behind this hillside. I think that will be so cute. Just like that. Yeah, very fun. Okay. Make sure it's nice and straight though. Mm -hmm. And again, keeping everything pretty flat on the project, just so that the sequins aren't caught up by anything, right? Also doing a little bit of layering here though, just to give a real fun dimensional look. Okay. I'm gonna bring my mini Misty back in just for a moment because I have a little sentiment that I pulled from another Simon Hurley stamp set that I have. And it says, there's no place like home. And I thought that that could be really cute. Oh, I think maybe right here. I thought it would just be super, super cute to have that there. So I am going to, yeah, make sure it's straight <laughs> first and foremost. Make sure that's really straight and that looks good. I'm going to stamp that right on that little hillside. Grabbing the memento and I'll link the stamp set that this is from. so pretty but oh I think that will just be I think it's so fitting too with the cute little hillside of homes there's no place like home oh perfect I'm not even going to attempt doing that twice because I think that that just looks really really sweet okay now I'm going to build up my shaker okay I have these little shaker covers that I really love to use and first and foremost, there is a little film that you want to take off. So I just kind of grab it right here and I grab it um, with my tweezers or any type of um, tool, but I do it right here because if you do it on the window opening, you don't want to, you know, actually scratch where you're going to see, but you're not going to see this little taped part. So I'm going to turn it over this way to where we can see the 3M adhesive side. Actually, before that, let's go ahead. They have built-in little score lines, but I'm going to go ahead and 
pre-fold it makes the next part so much easier okay and then I'm going to remove the liner from three sides and leave my top open okay now I'm gonna place my little seam right inside just like that and make sure it's nice and straight Then I can, as soon as I know it's <laughs> nice and straight in there, I like to close the bottom. And then I rotate my card. You don't have to, but I find it easiest to fold from the bottom. But then I'm going to do the side and the side. And then we have a little shaker area. Isn't that cute? So leaving this top open because now we're going to place our fill inside. Okay, I have some new sequins that I want to use, and I really like this because it has a really pretty pink hue to it. It's seemingly clear sequins, but it has a little pink hue to it, which I thought would be really nice um, for like a glittering snow look, but also to coordinate with the houses. So I'm going to just start by adding a little bit in, and that might even be plenty. That actually might even be a little too much. So let me take a little bit out, which is so easy. Just pour some back in here. Okay. And then, oh, that's cute. The only thing is I should have put my sentiment somewhere else, but when the card is kind of flat, you can still see it, of course. But I think that that is so cute and fun. Okay, so once you've decided on how much you want in there, and I like this, I poured just a tad more out. And add this last little one in there though how cute um then you can turn it over just remove the final piece and stick down and you are closed oh my gosh that is so cute i really like it and i think that that sequins is so fun because it's clear so you can see through it if the sequins ends up lying you know on your scene but also that little pink hue brings in a little bit more fun pink to the scene and i think that's just so so fun same as last time, I'm going to score at four and one quarter and make a A2 size card. That way I can place my whole shaker scene on the top of this card and we'll be all finished. I am going to use this sticky thumb tape runner. It is really, really strong. So it's good for projects like this that are a little bit heavier. Not that this is extremely heavy, but it's a little bit more bulky, right? It's not a simple piece of paper. We have a whole shaker scene. So I'm going to add some to the little base there. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to use my tool here to place, sometimes this is hard with these actually. So let me do this because it doesn't end up being the exact size, but it's so close. So I'm just gonna get close. There we go, yep. Okay, then we fold, so cute. Let me just make sure that that is really down. Press, press, press. Okay, and then we have our little shaker card that is full panel shaker. So fun, and look how it looks just like it's snowing. I think it's so fun, and I think there's a lot of fun movement there. I probably, if I were going to do this again, would arrange my trees so that my sentiment could be here. I think that would be a better choice. So if you do recreate that, put your sentiment up here. But I also like it because if the card is just like this, which most likely it will be, especially coming out of an envelope, then you can absolutely see your sentiment. Okay, there are two fun little Christmas cards that I am so excited about. I had a lot of fun playing with this new release. I think these are so fun. And again, the possibilities are truly endless with these new stamp sets and stencil set. They're so fun. You can take them in any direction and really have fun creating some fun holiday cards. I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you did. Also, be sure to check out the description box below. I will link all of the things that I used in this video. And be sure to subscribe if you're brand new. I can't wait to show you what's coming to my craft table next. And I will see you all in the next video.